the rest had to be filled. And we hopefully did it so that you kind of liked it. It seems so. Next piece uh, is uh, organized or thought about by Reto. And this piece is called Up and Push. First of all, we want to thank you for being here in Romania, in this region, uh, where we suppose you find uh, something nice. Yeah, I can say that. I mean, I'm very surprised about this this area here because I, I've never been here. I was once in uh, Sibiu, and uh, I was really surprised to be here in the middle of nowhere, I mean, a, a, a tiny little village, and there's a kind of an international festival. It was really a big surprise, and I 
I was driven around a little bit and, and it was a really nice landscape and wonderful people, so I'm really surprised about this whole area here, the whole situation. And this environment uh, was uh, populated by uh, Germans uh, some years ago? Uh, that's, this was my surprise. I mean, practically everybody in this area speaks German, so I, I don't need to speak English almost, you know. And I was surprised about that too. I didn't know anything about this kind of uh, uh, whole political situation here. I mean, of course, I know from, from the past, but I, I didn't know it was populated by Germans, you know, and, and they are somehow back. I see lots of German license plates here and on these cars, and this is kind, kind of funny for me. <laughs> I didn't expect that. You have a, a special uh, relation with uh, your instrument, uh, with the bass. Uh, uh, you developed that instrument, uh, and uh, in the beginning, uh, I think, was the music in your head, in your mind. Uh, how did you manage to to get that music uh, through the instrument? Yeah, that's a good and a difficult question um, because I, I just try to transport whatever is inside myself to let it go through that instrument. Uh, by the way, I, I just I just play bass by pure random because I, I, I played cello before and, uh, and, and in that high school where I worked, where, where I studied, uh, there was a school orchestra then, a classical orchestra. And in that music room, there was always a bass standing around. Nobody could play it. And at some some point, the, the conductor and, and musical teacher said, uh, "I would love if somebody could would be able to play bass." And I said, "Well, I can try. It can't be that difficult." And I tried it, and it worked out. And so, so by by this purely random situation, I became a, a bassist, so to speak. And only later on, much later on, I decided to become a professional. I didn't want to be a musician in the first place. As a matter of fact, I, I just made films. I was in the, in, the, in the commercial film company and, and I did everything. I was director and, and scriptwriter and uh, editor and everything. So I worked there for eight years uh, to avoid to, be, to, to become a musician. But always at the same time I, I played on my big double bass then. I played some, some, some uh, music local around. This was in Stuttgart in Germany then. And I worked very often with this German, uh, famous German piano player Wolfgang Downer. I was a member of his trio, and uh, so then, luckily, in, in in the late 60s, there were there was the first oil crisis. Luckily, I have to say, because then uh, this film company went bankrupt, so I had nothing to do, and I tried a little to continue with other companies, but I didn't like it, and I didn't want to go to TV, uh, and so suddenly I, I became a musician, and I, it was in 72, and then in 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 72 I also developed this kind of bass. But the main reason was because when I had to travel a lot, the big double bass was too too big you know, to transport it and so on. So I wanted to have something little, something small, something uh, which could be transported easier and so on. And so I built this kind of bass. Actually, I have to be, I will be honest, uh, basses like this existed at some point. And I understood that they have been played by hillbilly uh, bass players. But this bass disappeared totally after a little while. And I found it again in an antique shop, and I saw how oh, this looks kind of nice. Let's find out what one can do with that. And so I bought it and and reconstructed it, added a, a nice pickup system, and so on and so on and so on, and added a fifth string, the high C string, which enables me to to play also more melody stuff. And and uh, so it, then it throughout the years it developed my style, and I can't really say what is my style. Or, uh, or why it came like that. It's, it just came out of me and, and for example when somebody asks me what kind of music do you play, uh, describe it and I, usually my answer is I can't help you, listen and then you tell me how you find this music and how would you describe. And usually when this happens sometimes, seldom enough, somebody listens and I, uh, afterwards I ask him, no, please uh, try to, 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 to explain my music and he says, uh, Mm, uh, uh, it's difficult. Uh, it's uh, it's yeah. It's jazz, but it's not really jazz. It's I don't know. I don't mind. You know. It's <laughs> Thank you. 
your music uh, sounds uh, uh, Eurocentric. Uh, it's not uh, that kind of uh, of, uh, of jazz which uh, comes from America, but is a uh, kind of uh, music uh, which express uh, the in a, in a way European uh, feeling yes, absolutely. and traditions also, and uh, and maybe the approach also. Yeah, but uh, this is this is easy to explain. Uh, of course, when I when I started to love jazz, uh, I, I I listened to Americans. Of course, that the, the, uh, the music came from the United States usually, you know. And but my my roots are in Europe or even in Germany, so to speak. Uh, better in Europe now these days. And uh, uh, I just wanted to follow my my roots again and not to follow the Americans. And I listened into myself what what is my preferent my, my preferred sound, my preference, and so on. Uh, and my preferred music, and I discovered there are other ways which I, uh, which I prefer by far to, to the American way of playing. Uh, for example, uh, repetitions. I like repetitions a lot, like in the classical music too. And so uh, I, I said, for example, uh, when there is a nice chord, this chord disappears within a few seconds and it's never repeated. So let's repeat this chord more and more and more and more, so until you are satisfied and that you can do something with this with this uh, uh, chord. So uh, throughout the years, I, I, I simply developed something which is, I would say, it's based on, on European traditional music uh, and less less on jazz or lesser and lesser now, I would say. How do you uh, value uh, the contemporary uh, European, uh, first of all, German uh, composers uh, like um, uh, Heiner Goebbels uh, or uh, Stockhausen or uh, Kagel? Well, it's a it's it's a it's a music for minority, I have to say, and it's it's of course it's supported a lot by by the cultural events and so on. But um, this music usually would have would have big big difficulties. To be performed, because uh, it's it's just it's 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 only for a, for a minority, you know, and and this music could not live without supports, without subventions, and so on. Uh, there was once an, um, an article written by uh, Ernest Ancermé, mm -hmm. a, a Swiss conductor, and he said if there would have been if there would not have been any subventions for for contemporary music, this music would have developed totally differently. And I believe that too. It's it, you can only do it like this because it's it's a vengeance, uh, it's it's supported and so on. 
who would who would write a, a symphony which takes which takes 12 hours and only weird sounds and nobody would listen or helicopters you know? or, or whatever you know whatever it's it's it has to be like that but i'm i'm a little bit a, a split personnel i'm not against subventions this has to be otherwise other things would not be possible but on the other hand there are a few things which which are subventioned and supported and I don't know really why. So I'm, I'm a, little, a split personnel, I don't really know which way I should uh, prefer to go. I noticed that uh, in the last period uh, uh, the gap between uh, your albums is uh, pretty long, mm -hmm. um, from four to seven years. Uh, it's a distance in time. Uh, um, do you think uh, the albums uh, must uh, be uh, a perfection, uh, a work of art uh, which uh, is uh, uh, somewhere in the history or is the expression of uh, your mood in that period when you create that album uh, the, these these gaps which which get longer and longer now or at least the last uh, album which came out uh, uh, three years ago I think uh, end, endless days yes it took that long because I didn't know what to what to say what to what to play apart from the fact that I was very, very busy with other people, with the Jan Gabari group usually. And uh, I didn't have the time to sit down and to, th to hear into myself what kind of music I want to present. Plus, um, since about, let's say, 15, 10 to 15 years, there, there, are, there, there are so many albums released now, so many, uh, 100 per day and so on and so on and so on. When I started in 72, uh, my my album actually 
was kind of a, a shock, you know, the first one, Colors of Chloe. But the people, the, 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 the market wasn't really overflown yet, and now it's overflown. And I certainly don't want to add another unnecessary album. So I, I have to wait that long to find out, to be really sure what I want, uh, what I want to present. And uh, when you listen to all my albums, I think it's meanwhile something in 10 or 11, I don't remember exactly. Um, I always tried uh, the album which follows another one to be totally different, totally different personnel, totally, not totally different music, but a to different approach and a different reason. So I had once I had singers and then I had I had my quartet and then I had Gary Burton and then I had Gabarek and so on and then I had strings at the last ones, I mean uh, 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 artificial strings, but still they sound like strings. And so I'm, I'm looking now. I start slowly now to look for some other ideas. What what could I present again with, uh, without repeating myself? Because I hate to uh, to repeat too much for myself, and this is the big difficulty. To, to find out what what needs the world and so far I can't answer that <laughs> seems to be in good health opposite opposite other countries where it's a kind of a uh, more and more even a, a kind of a dying uh, kind of a dying music and the scene is not so ha so much happening anymore uh, in Germany for example um, there are a few festivals of course but um, in the old days when I grew up um, you could say in every uh, in every city there was one or two jazz clubs and now yeah, there's nothing anymore. There's only discos now or, or rock or whatever and there's hardly any jazz club anymore. So any, any young musicians, they don't know where to play anymore. You know, There's, there's yeah. no, no scene anymore. Maybe you heard that statement um, uh, Frank Zappa said some 20 years ago or so, that uh, jazz is not that, uh, but just smells funny. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sure does, it sure does. <laughs> now this is my, this is my provocative uh, expression that I usually shock people in, in saying jazz is dead. I, I, I want to say with that um, jazz is still creative, but it's not innovative anymore, and this is the big problem. 
As, as long as I grew up with jazz, there was always a new development. It was always innovative. There was, there was, there was cool jazz, there was swing, there was this and there, blah, blah, and up to, to the free jazz, and then finally the swing back to this kind of easy Amish sounds. Uh, uh, but what's what's now? Now there's only fusion, you know, ethno stuff and repeat, repetition. Uh, Winton Marsalis plays uh, old neo bebop, and nothing is fresh anymore. And this is the big problem now. And therefore, I'm I'm saying provocatively, jazz is dead. But long live improvisation. That's the big difference, of course. Thank you. 